So ladies and gentlemen, uh, I shall talk about hotel and residential building traffic today. Uh, there are lots of planning rules and guides and traffic templates for offices, how to plan lifts in offices, but not so many for hotels and residential buildings. Actually, the only ones that I could find traffic templates for um, were from Stracos, and they, be, and they are from 1960s. So it's uh, time to update this information up to date, and uh, that is what I have. Um, I'm going to do here today. So uh, first, uh, I look at the current practices how uh, how elevators are or lifts are planned in in hotels and residential buildings. Um, it's a summary of current practices. And then I, I talk, uh, talk about the measurements uh, we have made and how we have made it, them and show the traffic patterns we have found out in these type of buildings. Okay. Uh, there, uh, there are several standards uh, how to plan lifts in, in hotels. Uh, Cheap standard, Kone has its own standard, and uh, every company has their own standards, I'm sure. And uh, a lot of um, planning guides from different uh, hotel chains. Every hotel chain seems to have their own planning guide. Uh, I use the uh, hotel chains that are mentioned there on the list. So they, uh, they are mostly three, uh, three to five star hotels. Uh, these planning guides that I have used here. And uh, uh, there are some rules of some how to select elevators in hotels. Uh, in uh, in Chipsa, they uh, suggest that uh, if it's a business hotel, we assume one person per uh, guest room. But if it's a holiday ho hotel, it's two persons per guest room. And um, the minimum number of uh, elevators should be at least two for guests, hotel guests. Uh, a lift uh, per every additional hundred rooms in in a, in a hotel, or hundred keys. And car cap car capacity should be at least seventeen persons. Also, a hotel is special in that sense that uh, it's not enough to provide uh, guest lifts. Uh, also service lifts are needed and a, a rule of thumb is to have about half of the number of guest lifts for service. Uh, what they say in the planning guides is that the hotel traffic is two-way, half in and half out. And when planning elevators or lifts uh, in, in hotels, uh, Usually, 40 to 55 percent car load factor is used, and the reasoning for this is that uh, they assume that people, um, hotel guests, usually carry their luggage with them, so there should be uh, enough space in the elevator uh, lift uh, for the luggage as well. Uh, the handling capacity that is required uh, varies from 10 to 15 percent, about and uh, interval for elevators leaving from the lobby is uh, from 25 to 50 seconds, depending on the standard. Uh, for simulations, we don't uh, usually use this interval, so uh, there are more recent uh, data, from hotel, mostly from hotel chains, that, uh, that recommend waiting time criteria and time to destination criteria. Uh, for hotels, and uh, waiting time uh, varies from 20 to 45 seconds, the recommended uh, wait waiting time. So in three-star hotel, of course, it's longer, and five-star is uh, quite short. And uh, also the, also the um, car size is bigger for five-star hotel than, than for three-star hotel, so uh, it's 21-person car usually that they recommend. <coughs> and uh, normally 12% uh, uh, is uh, 
thought as a, a sufficient handling capacity, but for five-star hotel it can be higher. Uh, the speeds in the planning guides are given as a function of, of the number of floors. And here I have just summarized from the planning guides. Uh, these dots, dots show uh, their, their recommended, recommended speeds for a certain number of floors. But this curve fitting here uh, is, uh, gives uh, about the speed. So uh, there is a formula for it. So it's uh, quite, uh, l um, the recommended speeds are quite quite um, the same with different hotel chains. chains. That was uh, the, uh, how, how the hotel elevators are selected at the moment, but uh, in residential buildings it's a bit different. It, it is uh, very much dependent on, on the local practice and um, how to select the uh, lifts in, in buildings. Uh, there are rules how to um, estimate the population uh, in residential buildings. According to cheap say it's uh, one person per bedroom uh, in luxury uh, residential buildings and two persons in low income buildings. A uh, corner recommendation is that uh, we have two persons in the first bedroom and, and one in, in the additional bedrooms. Uh, in, in residential buildings, uh, um, one should uh, notice that there is uh, one car that is big enough for stretcher transportation and furniture, at least one car. And uh, what is said uh, about residential buildings is that um, it's a two-way traffic. It's either in to the building or out from the building, not very much in the floor. And uh, the traffic is quite low. Uh, the expected handling capacity that uh, is needed is from 5 to 9 percent. And uh, waiting times intervals can be longer in a residential building because uh, buildings because uh, there can be only one car, one, ele one lift in, in the building. And then the interval is the same as the round trip time. And, and that is why it's, it can be longer. Uh, there is a class of apartments that uh, I call here serviced apartments uh, that, that are something uh, a, a tenant that is in between hotels and apartments. So uh, people uh, live in, like in hotels, but they live in the, it's not a hotel, so they live in the apartment, but it's serviced, uh, they get uh, all kinds of services there, lining and cleaning. And, and then the recommendation for, uh, for elevators or lifts uh, for this kind of uh, building is uh, in between the hotel and residential building recommendations from 10 to 12 percent handling capacity. And interval is something up to 90 seconds. And again, I have summarized here uh, for simulations uh, uh, from the planning guides, uh, the waiting time and time to destination criteria here. So uh, most of them are from uh, hotel chain planning guides, but uh, they had also recommendations for residentials. Uh, but some, some figures I have put there. So, uh, in low-rise residentials, um, the car sizes are smaller. In high-rise residentials, uh, they go up to 2,000 kilos, according to the planning guides. And uh, handling capacity up to 12 here, when it is here, 7.5. Uh, that was the current practice, how, how lifts are selected in uh, hotels and residential buildings, but uh, do we know actually how the traffic is there? There are only those patterns that have been given 50 years ago. So uh, now we made some measurements, uh, of, or we have made uh, some measurements uh, of the traffics uh, 
we use three methods, a uh, control system that uh, ca counts the number of people uh, who use elevators or lifts. So uh, how many enter from a floor and how many exit uh, to a floor during a, a, a lift stop. And uh, this is done uh, by the control system throughout the day for every floor and direction. So we get quite comprehensive picture of the traffic in the building. Uh, we used to have this kind of uh, device we called a lift traffic analyzer that uh, could be attached to old relay systems to, uh, uh, and it was used in modernization uh, cases. So we measured uh, the traffic before the modernization and after the modernization. Uh, number of stops and call times, but uh, something that we also measured was the photocell signals where we could count the number of people that used the elevators. <clears throat> the third method, uh, method were, was uh, manual counting. So uh, this is the method where a person sits in the lobby and counts uh, how many people came and uh, left the building. Uh, and this, uh, if we uh, think about the traffic here, uh, the manual counting only uh, with uh, manual counting, we can only estimate how many, what is the portion of incoming traffic and out outgoing traffic and how intense it is. But with this uh, LTA and, and uh, control system, we can also uh, get the figures how, how heavy the interfloor traffic uh, at the upper floors is. Um, we made uh, measurements in four buildings uh, for, for both uh, building types and the buildings were in Singapore, Dubai, Cairo and Helsinki for, for hotels. They were business hotels uh, from four, uh, four to five star hotels. And the method uh, we used is here. Uh, these three hotels were six car groups quite big hotels and, and the uh, number of hotel guests is shown here. So in Finland, in Helsinki it was 170, but uh, let's say in Singapore it was 1,240, quite, quite much bigger hotel. And, and this uh, pop, uh, number of hotel guests were uh, asked uh, when the measurement was made. Uh, here in, in Singapore and Helsinki, but uh, these two buildings were, are um, based on design criteria, the population. So uh, uh, these buildings are in Europe uh, and, and in Middle and Far East. And the residential buildings are also um, more or less like that. Uh, so there was a building from Espo, Finland and Singapore, France, Marseille, and, and then Hong Kong was one. And uh, two and three car groups. The number of floors is here, I didn't mention, but uh, they are, uh, let's say, from 10 to 50 about the building heights. So, um, and, and the population here from 100 to 700. And also here we had this population estimation uh, this uh, was checked on site, but this, uh, this is based on uh, design criteria. These two are were uh, asked on site what is the population at the moment. <coughs> so here we have the, uh, the only and one uh, traffic profile that we have had from hotels up to now, and it's uh, made by Stracos. So you can see here uh, is the morn uh, morning breakfast time traffic two-way and, and then uh, he has also here lunch time traffic, check-in traffic at four o'clock and evening, evening dinner traffic, down traffic here. So I made a, a figure where I stacked these two components uh, on top and you can see uh, clearly these uh, four peaks he had there. So morning and lunch time and check-in peak and then dinner peak. 
This is a figure that uh, was, uh, shows the traffic that was measured in Cairo, Egypt. And uh, in this uh, hotel, they have a peak in the morning that is clearly the breakfast and checkout peak. And, and then they have a peak here in the evening that is the dinner peak. Uh, that they are the most, uh, or the peaks you can see easily. Uh, we have here, uh, this screen shows uh, the portion of incoming traffic and brown is uh, the outgoing traffic, yellow is interfloor. And uh, this comes, this interfloor comes from uh, the method, uh, it, how it was measured. So the control system knows the entrance floors. And all the traffic that ha ha happens be, uh, in upper floors, it takes as interfloor traffic. So it doesn't know that there are restaurant and gyms and these kinds of um, floors at upper floors so it takes it and them as interfloor traffic but uh, we can as well uh, split uh, this uh, into two-way traffic this uh, interfloor component if uh, we want and and then use the uh, the gyms and restaurant as uh, entrance floors in simulation uh, here we have all these four buildings in one graph. So you see that uh, there are lots of uh, lines that uh, that uh, are hap or peaks that happen at uh, slightly in a different time. And and if we calculate the average at certain time, it, it becomes this black line here that is uh, quite low. It uh, we lose the peaks there because uh, the peak times are not at the same time everywhere. So the average in that sense is a not very good idea um, as, uh, to use as a uh, typical traffic. So uh, here we can see uh, another picture. These uh, colored uh, patterns are the averages, but the dashed line shows here a worst case line that uh, that is the maximum peaks that uh, we had there in these four measurements. And uh, if we compare now Stracos, that is the red line, it's uh, uh, very uh, I'm very happy to see here that uh, we have actually about the same peaks here. Uh, his peaks are a bit uh, higher. We have uh, the highest peaks, something like 9.5 uh, 9, 9 or something, and he has a 10 here. But uh, it's more or less the same. It depends on the building very much when the peaks are, but uh, it's uh, similar. So uh, what I suggest here that uh, is that uh, this could be a typical uh, traffic profile that is the worst case profile uh, from today, today's hotel traffic. Uh, for residential buildings, uh, I have the same type of approach uh, for from Stracos. So he has here uh, the residential traffic in US, US uh, in 1960s. So they have here morning down peak, then they have a lunch peak here. Uh, it seems that uh, people are perhaps coming to lunch at home. And, and then they have here um, children back to school peak. That is uh, about uh, three o'clock uh, in the afternoon. And, and then evening peak when people return home. This uh, is uh, measured traffic from Hong Kong, Hong Kong housing uh, residential buildings. And uh, here we can see that there are again only two clear peaks, uh, the morning down peak here and, and the evening peak. And you can see that this green portion becomes higher here. So uh, people return home in the evening, but not very clear peak. Uh, there is also some in, uh, interfloor traffic in this building and it comes uh, from the culture. So there are people that collect 
uh, carpets uh, from the building at certain time of day and, and cause interfloor stops. Uh, so um, uh, there are differences uh, in the traffic depending on the culture. Uh, again, uh, a summary of these three uh, buildings here. We can see these peaks, but they uh, uh, can uh, occur slightly at different times, and the average peaks uh, or average curve comes quite low, about 3% when the peaks are here, 6 uh, The colored patterns are the averages, and, and the dashed line is the uh, worst case pattern. <laughs> But now, when we compare with Strakos, <laughs> it's not anymore the same. So, uh, uh, so uh, it seems that something has happened, or uh, perhaps the traffic is quite different in the US. I didn't have any tra uh, bi residential buildings from the US. But, uh, <clears throat> Okay, here is the suggested uh, pattern that we could use for residential buildings or today that uh, covers uh, at least uh, Europe and Middle Far East. Uh, so so uh, I think uh, the residential uh, we have to study more, but uh, it may be that uh, it is uh, the culture, but I suspect that it, it may be time that uh, t uh, times have changed from 60s. People don't go anymore at home to eat. I don't know if it's so in US still, but uh, not at least in Europe. Uh, they eat more outside or in the office. And, and, and uh, also um, children come back to sc um, from school later, perhaps, than they used to earlier. But uh, what is uh, quite similar is this hotel traffic pattern. It seems to match still. And so the counting of struggles, it was manual counting at the lobby. So it seems to <laughs> be valid still. Uh, so the suggested profiles uh, were for the first uh, worst case, but the portions of incoming outgoing in the floor are the averages of these three buildings. And, and these, uh, these patterns, I suggest that uh, they could be used as typical patterns, uh, at least uh, in some energy, daily energy uh, analysis of elevators. But uh, of course, more measurements are welcome, at least, uh, and especially from US. Thank you.